Hello, this is David Harper of Monarch Turtle with a look at credit enhancement in a securitization for FRM candidates. This is from Christopher Culp, and we start with a balance sheet perspective. On the left, the special purpose vehicle has purchased credit sensitive assets from the originator in a true sale. Recall that the special purpose vehicle wants to be bankruptcy remote from the originator. Bankruptcy remote protects the assets from the originator, not the other way around. Why is bankruptcy remote important? Because the investors in the securitization do not want the creditors of the originator to be able to reach these assets if the originator should go bankrupt. On the right, we have the tranched securities or bond classes issued to the investors. So these are the asset-backed securities, the notes that are claims on the cash flow generated by the credit sensitive assets. Recall in an earlier screencast, we said that the total market value of the assets on the left need to equal the total market value of the liabilities plus equity on the right. Further, not only the value, but the cash flow and the risk needs to be preserved. Assets on the left. On the right, the debt is the senior classes plus the mezzanine classes. Here, simplistically denoted with A1 and A2 for the senior classes and M1 and M2 for the mezzanine classes. That's the debt. The residual class or the junior class or the equity class is here denoted by X. And so a key idea in tranching these liabilities is that the junior most tranches absorb the credit risk or the credit losses first. An important design or feature of the securitization is credit enhancement. Credit enhancement alters or reduces the credit risk of particular tranches depending on the objectives of the securitization. A note about the subprime securitization. It's clear now in retrospect that many of the credit agency ratings for these structured finance vehicles were completely bogus and without merit. It's still true that credit enhancement is an important part of a securitization. Now the first type of credit enhancement is the built-in subordination, which you can see in the structure itself. So part of the design is that the equity tranche absorbs the first credit losses and then after that the mezzanine tranches absorb credit losses. So just by virtue of the hierarchy, if we take the senior class here denoted by A1, it is already protected. It already benefits from credit enhancement by virtue of the subordination. All of the classes that are subordinate to it will absorb credit losses first. So the subordination is the first part is the first maybe most important part of credit enhancement and specifically it's an internal credit enhancement so CULP divides credit enhancements into internal and external and now we can see that subordination is the first form of internal credit enhancement the next type of internal credit enhancement is over collateralization and there are a few ways to achieve the over collateralization the first is a direct equity issuance so in this case if the value of the credit sensitive assets is 100 million and then the value of the debt in total is 80 million and remember the debt here is going to be the senior classes that's a1 and a2 plus the mezzanine classes that's m1 and m2 in total let's say that has a value of 80 million that leaves over 20 for the equity and in a direct equity issuance the special purpose vehicle sells that equity tranche to an outside investor so now the outside investor assumes that 20 million in initial losses and again that becomes subordination for all of the tranches above it Another way to achieve over collateralization is through the holdback. 
in a holdback, the special purpose vehicle buys the assets at a discount from the originator. So here we still assume the assets are worth 100 million, but the origin, but the special purpose vehicle buys them for only 81 million and then issues notes on the 81 million. And then because of the 19 million discount, that 19 million becomes over collateralization. Another form of internal credit enhancement is a cash collateral account. So here the originator deposits cash into an account and that cash is used to absorb losses. One tweak is that if the losses don't occur, typically the originator does not get the cash back because that would create a performance link between the originator and the securitization and that would probably invalidate the true sale. The final form of internal credit enhancement is the excess spread. So here, if we just assume that these credit sensitive assets, they create interest income. So that's cash inflow to the securitization. Let's say that is 10 million per year. And then by the design of the tranched liabilities, the obligations on the special purpose vehicle are only 8 million per year. So from the perspective of the special purpose vehicle, it's collecting 10 million per year in interest income. That's interest on the credit sensitive assets. And it's paying out 8 million per year to the investors. That creates a gross excess spread of 2 million, which can go into an account and serve as credit enhancement. Now the net excess spread would deduct from the 2 million the gross ex excess spread, senior fees and expenses. But in either case, that excess spread acts as an internal credit enhancement. In regard to the set of external credit enhancements, CULP lists four. The first are insurance, wraps, and guarantees. So this include, includes financial guarantees and wraps on the collateral asset. Second, letters of credit. So here, the special purpose entity simply obtains a line of credit from a bank, and then the special purpose vehicle can draw down on that line of credit, and that's a form of external credit enhancement. Third, the special purpose entity can enter into a basket credit default swap with the collateral assets serving as the reference portfolio. And then the equity tranche could actually be the deductible. Fourth and finally, the special purpose entity can use, can use a put option on the assets. The put would allow the special purpose vehicle to sell the collateral assets to a counterparty for a fixed price. So that's the fourth and final form of external credit enhancement. And so we've reviewed a few forms of internal credit enhancement, which included subordination and over collateralization, and then a set of external credit enhancements that use third parties or counterparties or other banks with lines of credit to achieve the external credit enhancement. This is David Harper of the Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.